Mm -hmm. I won't be able to measure my productivity because uh, of one reason. Mm -hmm. One, I didn't stay there for long for the simple reason at that time, the salary which we were being paid at the ages, <laughs> I, could, I was the, I'm the eldest in my family and I could not be able to upkeep my, <laughs> my siblings. <laughs> so for that time, I was able to attend all those meetings. I, when I went in, I found that most, most of the meetings were, being, were taking place. So I was able to attend those meetings and I wrote the reports to the relevant AG mm -hmm. on what we had, on what, uh, what, what was supposed to, what, what we had discussed uh, in those Dr. meetings. What I'm saying, yes. through the share, if I go to the records of Mumia Sugar Company or Kenya Sugar or Sunni or Shemali or Tanda, for the five months... You will see me there. We want to see that you, you, you will see me there. Your uh, Castro, I think it's good to listen to the answer before you uh, Okay, answer. that's fine. Yeah. And that brings me to this other question which Honorable Commissioner Masharia was asking. And I got interested to know because you're talking about productivity and all those issues. From 205 to date, you are director of the teen companies. No, no, no. I have them. Oh, okay. You are not. Eh? This thing is misleading. Those are, because I, I did bother to count them, uh, there are 13 companies, but if you say no, I'm, I'm okay. Finally, you I'm are saying I'm not, not within 13 years. No, 13 companies. Between, 13 companies, yes, in from between. From 205 to date. Yes. 13 companies, you yes. are director. Yes. Okay. Now, I move on to my last question through the share, and uh, I, have, I happen to come from a farming community. Uh, the meters that in, in KICC, you are there for three, four years. Yes. Which is pretty quite long, actually. Most contracts go for three years. The KCC, what can they remember you for? Mm. Just one thing. Okay, okay. I think they can remember me as, uh, as a managing director. When I was a managing director, I did what we call right sizing right sizing was to close down most of those areas mm -hmm. which were making losses. Mm -hmm. As we did that, mm -hmm. I also uh, requested stakeholders to look for uh, partners whom we could uh, really, who will come to invest in KCC. I remember Tetra Pak South Africa for one year came back to me and said there were two companies in South Africa which wanted to invest in KCC. One company was called Clover and another one was called Palmalat International. Mm -hmm. I traveled to South Africa with a few directors. We signed uh, an agreement with Palmalat International to come as a strategic partner in KCC. Mm -hmm. Palmalat mm -hmm. had agreed to pump into KCC more than 3 billion Kenya shillings billion. And, and it was going to take over the management to give us the managing director, the chairman and the director for finance and I was going to move to the position of general manager. Immediate that time when people learned that Palmalat we had signed an agreement they came in and said we cannot give you we cannot allow south african companies to come and run our okay. company thank you sure thank you dr Tani. yes okay um thank you very much commissioner Gishohi. uh now is the time for Com commissioner koske thank you chair uh good afternoon Wakili. thank you good afternoon sir um i've gone through your bundle of documents and uh, in your CV and all the things that you've done and you, you are widely read, you, you have worked internationally, in fact you are one of those people who are supposed to be candidates for international uh, assignments like ICC and the, and the rest. Thank you. So I'm wondering, with that experience, academic uh, achievements, what what motivated what motivated you to apply for this position? 
Or what are you looking for in, in, in this position that you have applied? Now, thank you, thank you, uh, Honorable Commissioner. I have practiced law for the last 30 years. As I've said, I've done more than 3,000 cases in our legal system, from the judiciary, from the magistrate's court, up to the Supreme Court. Through God's grace, I was able to do cases at the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda in Arusha, for both at the uh, at Arusha and at the, at the appeals chamber at The Hague. Uh, I have been able, uh, Honorable Commissioner, uh, to be a member, again I want to indicate there, I'm a member of several international organizations which deal with legal issues. And one of those organizations is the International Association for Researchers and Lecturers on, uh, on, 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 on Intellectual Property Law, which organization is a very active organization. We meet annually in one of the universities to deliberate on new issues of law. I'm a member of the okay, Commonwealth. Okay, I want to to understand. You know, I want to see whether you you saw a gap in Supreme Court or yes. judiciary. Yes. And that gap can yes. be suitably be filled by yourself. Yes. Uh, you know, because of the competences that you are come bringing in. So, what are what what is the gap, or what are the challenges that you are seeing? that judiciary or Supreme Court is going through that the competences that you are bringing in will, will sort it out. Thank that you. Is, uh, and, and let us uh, focus on that so that yes. we can so, move first. So I was trying to build my competency. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I was trying to say, having gone all these places, I was convinced that I have something which I need to bring to the judiciary in Kenya. And that is really what made me uh, uh, to apply for this job. I feel I'm qualified. I have had enough, enough international exposure. I have been able to, to correlate various issues which maybe are not applicable in our judiciary. And having seen all these problems for the last 30 years, not problems, challenges affecting our judiciary, I said I need to come in and play a key role, play my part, a small part in improving our judiciary. Okay, in your tour of duty um, outside this country and uh, also being a practitioner here, uh, you must have realized that in businesses like contracts, like international investors, and even those who come to work like contractors and the rest, they always try their best to avoid court system in Kenya. If you look at their contracts, they always refer to arbitration, arbitration in London, New York, Hong Kong, Beijing, and other jurisdictions. Well, why, why, why do you think this is so? And uh, what are you bringing in to sort out uh, this issue so that the investors will have confidence in judiciary and, and thereby, you know, uh, you know, help us to to, to, to build our economy and, uh, you know, reduce unemployment rate that we have? Honorable Commissioner, that's a great question. People in Kenya, not even investors, most people, I think, uh, most people in Kenya look at the judiciary as a place, when you file your case, it will take so long. So if you are an investor and you want to make your money fast, you will need to go to a system where justice is delivered immediately. And in most cases, arbitrations, people manage their, uh, the, the, the process of justice. They are the ones who appoint the, 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 the arbitrator. They are the ones who pay the, the arbitrator. The arbitrator will be able to give uh, instant justice. Okay? Now, the judiciary, what I'm bringing to the judiciary is what I indicated to this court, to the, to, the, to the Judicial Service Commission, that unless we improve our road, the narrow road that the judiciary is traveling on, 
that is the road which every Kenyan wants to see becoming a highway. We want to, in fact, I want to say, in the whole world, we have got 195 countries, and out of the 195 countries of the, common, of the, of the UN, 54 are the Commonwealth, and these 54 apply the adversarial system. Now, out of these 54, I have done some research, almost 32 countries have a hybrid adversarial system where they have amended their rules to suit their justice. Kenya, we haven't. We are still on the old adversarial system which we got in 1870, 1897. We should also take into account our adversarial system has never, we have never researched as to whether we really need this adversarial system. Okay? So, w nobody, uh, you know, I, I like politicians, because politicians, in 1962, they said, we want uh, a federal government. In 1966, they said, we want a unitary government. In uh, 2010, they said, no, we want even a, 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 a presidential government. So, in, others, in, other, in other arms of government, there have been changes. In our judiciary, we now have that one small thing which we need to change. Interrogate ourselves and say, are these rules working for us? It's my submission before this commission that we need to change our rules. And if we change our rules, we'll make the judiciary the best place to practice. Justice must be done instantly. Advocates out here, we have cases which we want to be determined tomorrow. I would want to file a case and even ask the judge that please by tomorrow give us an order. Maybe a case of where a client is being evicted from a residence. Such cases should not take five years. Such cases should take 14 days. So my, my, my position is what I'm bringing in the judiciary is the experience that I have had in other jurisdictions which informed me to suggest for you the six uh, strategies that the judiciary will take. Thank you. Um this is now a follow-up uh, question. When you were responding to the chair, you explained and said corruption in judiciary is not systemic. What is it? Wonderful. When a problem is systemic, it means that problem is eating into the organization. You cannot do away with it. You have to look at it. Now, in my research, when I looked at the problems affecting the judiciary. Case backlog, corruption, okay, all these problems. These problems are effects of a specific cause. For instance, let's talk of malaria. When you have malaria, you have a headache. When you have malaria, you have no appetite. When you have malaria, you have pain, you have, you have, you have fever. My position is, and that is true, and, and I want to converse, it is a reality. Unless you remove malaria, the headache will still go on. In our position at the judiciary, the headache which we have is corruption. Backlog of cases is fever. Lack of appetite is the loss of files. If, we, if you treat, a, even if you take a ton of panadols every day, to kill what corruption, I can tell you, Honorable Commissioner, that headache will still be there. Okay, Let's deal on, with the problem. Yes, on and the problem is yes. the rules. Yes, on yes. corruption still, eh? you also mentioned that uh, when you arrive here, in six months, corruption will vanish. How will you deal with it? Now, now. And can you and be clear? Let, let us be clear. Yes, yes, Narrow yes. yes. If I were Chief Justice, I could be able to implement that. But there will be rebels, because not everybody will want to take that. And that's why I do not want to apply for that position. Because if you bring serious changes in an organization, there is what we call organizational politics. An organization usually behaves in a certain manner. If you are a foreigner, you want to go to that organization, you bring serious, serious changes. Studies have shown employees rebel. Okay? But if you are part and parcel of that organization and you are able to show people why they need to change people will change so what I'm only saying if the honorable deputy chief just was here and he takes up that I can tell you she will make a name for herself in the next three months 
that she has reduced corruption. If she is able to appoint a committee which can harmonize all the practice rules from the magistrate court to the court of appeal. For, I want to say, and Honorable Commissioner Wasame will bear with me witness, in the court of appeal, we are always, when filing an appeal, we are always interested in form. Can that, in fact, I, my suggestion is, can that form of filing cases in the court of appeal be applied in all other courts? Say that when a file moves from the high court to the court of appeal, we are not interested on form. We are not interested on justice. If you look at the practice rules for the court of appeal, the high court, and the supreme court, they are talking of which man, how you need to file your documents, how you need to underline them. What I'm now trying to say, can that be history? Say that when somebody comes to court, his documents were already filed in that format. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, another follow-up question is on uh, when you are responding to Commissioner Macharia. He asked you whether you have interacted before with DSC. And uh, did I hear no? Yes. You've not appeared before I've DSC not applied for, for any position? No. Our record states that you've applied for tribunals. Ah, the tri oh yes, tribunals. No, I was thinking of a judge. <laughs> Uh -huh. I applied as a, uh, I was interviewed, but I thought the, the way the interviewed was, I, I, I applied for uh, a position of a, a chairman of a tribunal, uh -huh. and uh, okay. I did not get it. Okay. Yes. So my final, so that was uh, long time. my final question is, uh, have you ever filed for any political position? Uh, indeed. When was it? And... Uh, you did not indicate in your CV that... Uh, now, why did you indicate? Because I didn't win. So I said, these are trials which you try and you don't win. If you don't win, it doesn't come part of you. Yes. Yes. It's like uh, putting the in my... If I'm not appointed judge of the Supreme Court, I'll not put it in my CV. So I, I'm asking that because uh, as you are preparing to come here, you are, you are, you are campaign... Uh, branding is still running. Do you think that there is a problem? Because I saw, I saw on your Facebook, on your walls, the, the, the calendars are there. Uh, 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 Governors 045, <laughs> I'm coming. Tokeros, Yui, Ekasi. Uh, I'm, you know, uh, uh, how, how is that? Allow, allow me to say. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner, yes, for yes, that yes, question. Yes. I want to tell you. Yes. Those things are not put by me. Those things, there are so many supporters in the rural area who would even want you to be their governor, even if you don't want. Yes. So I am not a fan of putting my things on Facebook. Yes. If you go to my Facebook page, yes. you will not get anything political. But if you just Google, uh, Google my name, there are several of, you know, people who like you for one thing or the other. Yes. Allow me yes. to say this. Yes. And uh, I have written uh, some religious books to show you that I, am, uh, I believe in God, and God is my defender. When I've taken a position, I take it fully. If I get this job, I know there is something which God wants me to do here. And that is ensure that justice reaches the poor person in my backyard in Kisi. I want somebody to enjoy services of the judiciary. The judiciary, people should love the judiciary. The way people love to running to achieve, it is important for also people to say, I want today to go to court because somebody has abused me. I want people to appreciate. And that's why I said, if through God's grace, you are able to admit my, my, my plea that I become a judge, I'll not only be a judge of the Supreme Court, but I'm ready to work to make sure that we turn around this judiciary. Indeed, after this, maybe, if uh, Honorable Chairperson allows, I have even put in, I have even come up with a strategic vision of my, what I need to do in the judiciary. There are several things which need to be done here. And I thank God that God has given me this exposure, and I want to plow it back to the judiciary as a patriotic Kenyan. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Wakili. Thank yes. you, thank you, Chair. Okay, Kasa, before I, I go to our last uh, um, 
uh, Commissioner, to ask you questions. Let me just clarify something. Yes, please. Uh, because the one, of, one of the strategies you gave us was right sizing, and, and you did emphasize that, uh, okay. Council, right sizing. Okay, okay. But then when you did the right sizing in KCB, they removed you. When you did the right sizing in KCC, they, did, they removed you also. So now if you bring it here in the judiciary, it will it work. Now, thank you. Now, what I said, the judiciary is ripe for right sizing. Okay? Now, what I want to say here, Honorable Chairperson, is that if the judiciary implements this system of making sure that justice travels on a smooth line, that cases are smooth, now the judiciary can go back because in your strategy you have said some of your strategies is to employ like now I, I saw the strategy for which is current the judiciary wants to employ 201 judges now when you have come up with a streamlined uh, roadmap there will be right sizing will what right sizing means you will want to question yourself do we really need the 201 judges that, that's all. i think i understand that I'll and my submission is yes you may not need them. And um, I was just concerned, so, um, Council, yes. is, do you think there's a problem of, of, a problem of change management? Because even that needs uh, strategy, how to change. <laughs> because, because I don't agree with you that uh, as long as you are an outsider, you, you cannot do it. You know? so is no, it, it, it is a problem. Think? Indeed, I agree it's a problem of change management. Yes. It's a problem of uh, organizational politics. It's a, a problem of uh, organizational culture. So when you come into organiza an, an, an organization, for instance, when the chief justice comes in, for in, uh, good luck for us, he has been uh, a judge for 18 years. So she will know who are the best person to, to carry her along. But if Mr. Nyaberi came in, I don't know anybody. If I want to implement this strategy, I might say, let's implement. Maybe Honorable Commissioner, uh, Evelyn, can you assist me on this? But maybe, you know, there, there are those challenges. But, but, but Council, I thought that is why you said you applied for this job, so you can bring something new. Now, I applied for this job so yes. that I can give in the information, so that this information, um, I want to deliver my information. And when I'm in, it will be easier for me to manage my information. People will respect it. If you talk from outside, people will, uh, will say, who is he? Who is he after all? We have not ever worked here. So, but when you are in the judiciary, you can be able to convince your fellow members in a quiet way, in a nice way, in conferences. They can give you an audience and say, Mr. Nyaberi, come and make a presentation. I can do that presentation. And through that, they will be convinced and say, let's, let's try, let's try. And in trying, we have already made it in the judiciary. Okay. Thank you very much, Council. Honorable Evelyn, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, good afternoon, Wakili. Good afternoon, madam. I was uh, skimming through your book, yes. Sexual Offenses and Offenses Against Morality. Yes, please. And I looked at the paragraphs where you handled homosexuality. Yes. <laughs> I was hoping to get some insights into your thinking about the subject. Basically, I saw uh, you basically explained the law and gave a digest of a case or two. But I would still want to get behind you are ahead on that issue okay uh, now do you have any acquaintances who belong to the lgbtqi community now let me answer by saying i'm a christian i wrote that book because i'm a lecturer i need to show the students what is the law what is the position i'm not even questioning why you wrote but my position is i don't subscribe you do not have uh, my question was mm. do you have friends no. or acquaintances who belong to that community i don't uh, have you engaged with them so as to know what challenges they face in our community I, uh, okay allow me to say when i was taking my phd at copenhagen the students whom i was teaching that was a way of life so uh, you, 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 you just take them the way they are because in their community, that's what they understand. But uh, in my local setting, I think I don't, I've not gotten in touch with anybody who is in that uh, category. 
I am not uh, aware how it is in Copenhagen and whatever challenges they may be facing. So you do not know about the Kenyan situation? No, I don't know the Kenyan situation. You do not know the Kenyan situation? Yes, yes. Okay, I want to just read, read you something I came across. Yes. As I was reading some of those cases that dealt with the uh, LGBT, uh, rather gay and lesbians. Yes. Gay sex is not a disorder or illness or an abnormal act. It is simply a variant of human sexual behavior determined by psychological, uh, sorry, physiological, biological, and social factors, which essentially ought not to be criminalized. Now maybe you can tell us what your, your views that's are very, concerning that. That's statement. very true. That's very true. I want to say most people who are in that position, they suffer some, uh, some psychological problems. For me, that's how I look at it. It's no, but not the person says it's not a problem. It's not a mental disorder or a mental illness. It is something that comes out of your physiological, your physical build. Uh, allow me to say the, the level of sanity differs from one person to another. You know, people may not know that that's a problem until they confront that it's really a problem. The way I look at it in our African setting, it's a problem, and those people need to be treated they need to be advised if they are ready to be advised. Insofar as I'm concerned, homosexuality is, a, is an abomination. I want to say that. So you do not subscribe to that statement? No, 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 no. I will be very firm on that. Mm -hmm. Even in the court, I'll be very firm on those issues. Because I'm a believer. I believe that God created man to be man. God created us, and the way he created us, he knew why he created us like that. Okay. But I will not criminalize it. I'll only be saying those people need assistance. Okay. Okay, now, uh, maybe you can also share with us your views concerning a case that was handled, I'd call it landmark, that was handled by the Court of Appeal in respect, or rather the case is uh, the NGO board versus EG, in respect to registration of an NGO that was seeking to adva advance the rights of gay and lesbian people. <laughs> yes, I remember that case was handled by uh, Honorable Jassil Naula, then it went on appeal. Uh, he, he, he agreed that those people sh have rights, they should have uh, their own uh, organization registered, and uh, they should be allowed to do their own things the way they do. Okay? Which may be variant from me. <laughs> allowed to do the things that they do? No, I, I, they should be under the right of association. They should be, they should be able to, to, to enjoy their right of association. Mm -hmm. Okay, but for me, if you look at the first sentence of our constitution, the first sentence of our constitution clearly says, "We believe in God, we trust in our Creator, and our Creator must have a system of operation." So, in so far as uh, I, I may not, if I were the one. I could really restrain myself from having them registered, but that is the, that, that, that's what the court said then. You've heard of uh, people who also belong to that community that manifest physiological features of both sexes. Yes. They are a creation of their Those community. ones are a creation. We need, in fact, to allow them as a, a third uh, gender in our country. They are not the ones who created themselves. They found themselves. So we need them to enjoy their rights. If it was my child, I really feel for him or for her. And I want him to enjoy his rights. But people who are, you know, moving from their normal position to another position, you need to look at that. Okay, so do you think that the decision, the, the, case, the case I was just referring to you to, basically the holding was that, uh, the bottom line was, but the state of being gay alone is not really an offense. So that if you are gay and you want to form an association, it doesn't mean you are forming it to commit an offense. The offense only comes about when you now take steps to commit the acts that are outlawed under Section 162 yeah. of the Penal Code. Uh, now, I have Do you think that is now diabolical? Mm, yes. Okay. I have written a lot on criminal law. Even the commencement of an action leading to an offense is an offense. The 
immediate you imagine that you want to commit an offense and it is discovered that you were imagining of committing that offense that's an offense already it's an incoherent offense so my, my my position is to allow these people to register an organization even though they have their basic rights indeed it, it conflicts the constitution and the constitution is very clear we are a god fearing people as kenya so now you're changing your position that because earlier you had said they should be given the right to associate do you now, uh, now change your position? no 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 uh what, what is that what i say <laughs> that sorry. is what you say <laughs> i'm sorry i'm only saying we should be cautious on what ruling we have to give in order to to to, to foster such uh, things okay maybe we can leave that for now uh the other question I, I want to ask you, I listened to you speak very passionately about backlog and strategies we can employ. Yes. And the six-point plan you even gave us. Yes. To eradicate backlog from our system. Yes. And I think that you have very brilliant ideas, some of which actually already captured under order 11 of the civil procedure rules. Yes. Maybe we just need to tweak them here and there. So uh, one of the strategies that we also employ to eradicate backlog is to dismiss dormant cases yes the court can do so on its own initiative yes but what can a party do if a case is stagnating in court he has been sued and no action is being taken in that case and the court has not dismissed that case now uh, allow me to say i have confronted that situation and again as i practice law in kenya where cases are dismissed for want of a prosecution now you may file a case and you know people have problems okay which uh, they need to be solved immediately but when they see these problems taking long uh, people have to move on okay now the, the, what i could want uh, the court to do this issue of dismissing cases only arises because our system of justice takes long if these cases were heard immediately then you would be able to sort out problems so i i, I want to say this is a a reactive strategy to re, to, 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 to 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 do away with cases which is still a strategy which is a strategy and but it it's was. not a good strategy okay it's not a good strategy because dismissing some of these cases you have not solved people's problems okay you have not solved the actual problem but imagine if this case was had within 30 days and the judgment was given within 30 days you could have sorted people's problems even if you wrote the judgment based on documents because right now everybody knows how to write people will be able to ventilate their problems on documents so if you if you are able to give judgment within 30 days much the better and even dismiss it at that time because at that time people will show that they have no interest but coming up with a service week for me sometimes i find it uh, as a, a reactive strategy which sometimes doesn't work because for instance in i don't know last year a few of my cases were thrown out but i went back through applications and reinstated them okay so it doesn't work it's a reactive strategy in delivering in justice let's make sure that we have a system that vindicates everybody you realize that for a case to be concluded there are several players absolutely so by the time a court is dismissing dormant cases parties have not taken steps to prosecute their case there's been no action in that file for over three years so the court takes the <laughs> recalls to dismiss the cases. I, I can tell you I have experienced that. For instance, right now, if I have to take a date for a case, I'll, uh, right now the dates, if you go to our registries, the dates you will be given for hearing is next year. Okay? If you have a date for next year, the immediate I take a date now, I was taking a date uh, last week, I was given a date for April next year now imagine between now i've written a letter to my client because immediately i leave court i write a letter to my client telling him your case will come in april next year which means my client should have a good record to remember that the case is coming so what you will find is that there is most people they don't keep records even us we don't have a diary for next year 
So we are, we are using a notebook. So even in our, our management system, it will make most of those cases the client now next year, if he thinks it, he will forget about it. But uh, uh, those are but, the challenges. That is, not, that is not the issue that I had raised. Yes. It was about dormant cases, not cases with far so, that you forget. But anyway, my so, question, uh, my original question was, you are a party and you've been sued, and the case has stayed in court, no action, the court is not dismissing, the person who has sued you has not taken any debts. What's your, what recourse do you have? Now, the recourse I have, that's what I gave as one of my, my, my strategies. The only recourse which we should have, we should utilize co the commission as a to make you a party. You are a party. A party. A you defendant. Have, a party. You have no recourse because you will be told the date is next year. The date is two years. You have no. You have no recourse. There is no justice. You just take it up and say, "Oh, what could I do?" So most people who are defenders, uh, again, you know, when you tell them that cases are not coming up, they forget about them. But that does not mean that the issue has vanished. The issue could be there, but there are no cases, but there are no dates. So that's why I was uh, requesting uh, this commissioner, because one of your, your, your mandate is to ensure that you promote justice and you propose the national government or you come even with bills. If you came up with a bill fast tracking all cases, justice is hard and that is the, 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 the that that is that's that's really the the spirit of our constitution when it says cases must be heard immediately just must be delivered okay, immediately. is it the prerogative of only the plaintiff to fix a matter for hearing under the civil procedure <laughs> rules no the the, the defendant can fix the matter but you see the defendant usually is defending himself he has not inclusive a case is dismissed okay that is true. Yes, so the defendant has no business with the case. In the scenario I was giving you, the yes. case has not been dismissed. The plaintiff has not taken steps. And you are the defendant. So you can't fix the matter for hearing. That is correct? No, no, no. It, it, again, it is a wrong position, but that's what happens. Okay? And again, you find defendants want to utilize that rule that if a case is not fixed for three years, it will be dismissed. So who am I to fix that date? When a case is going to be dismissed in any case the defendant also has the option to apply for its dismissal uh, most defendants would not want to do that because uh, again it's costly maybe their lawyers will tell them for me to put in an application you need to pay me so people people would don't want to do that because they don't want to spare to suspend okay thank you yes now i was looking through uh, your vetting documents uh we received a complaint from someone who has sued you yes in respect to an accident that happened before i joined kenya school of law <laughs> motor vehicle registration number kah 663 in 1999 you were sued in 1999 yes the case is still the case was concluded yes it's pending appeal yes this case took because it was concluded in 2019, took 10 years, it's an injury claim. What does that make you feel? Now, that again shows you the system which we need to work on. Because I, as the defendant, I don't need to take a, a date. And that's what I was telling you. I don't need to take a date. You know, the, the way our rules are, okay? The, it is the, is the accused, is the, the plaintiff who was supposed to take a date and ventilate on his cases. Well, clearly our rules allow you to take a date. Yes, but... Uh, no, no, for, that's someone, true. for someone who was speaking very passionately about it and getting backlog, I'm having difficulty reconciling this. No, 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 no. I'm not the court. I have not sat in the court. Mm. If you go to court and you are told the date is next year, what do you do? What do you do? You take the date that's available. Next year. You go next year, you are not ready to proceed. It's given another year. You go there next, the other year, the matter is not ready to proceed. It takes another year. What I want to say there, in that case, I, uh, I was, I am the defendant. In fact, let me say, that case was an accident. It was being handled by an insurance company called Lexstar. Lexstar had its own lawyers. Lexstar was supposed to, uh, to, to pay. Lexstar collapsed. So the matter then came to me as the defendant. By the time it came to me, it is when I was being served with 
uh, an attachment. At that stage, I said, I did not, I don't know about the case. To vindicate my rights, I went to court to check and I found I was not served. So when you are not served, what do you do? You apply to court to set aside the judgment, which I did. Okay? So when I set the, aside the judgment, the mother ought to have been listed for hearing. Now, if you look at, if you look, go and check the court file. The mother, th that case was listed several times without proceeding. Okay? By the time it proceeded, it was fully hard. I, checked, been I fully checked the court file, Wakili, and I also checked your response. Yes. And you yourself said that the plaintiff went to sleep from 2012 to 2016. Yes. And that is why I was asking you, what is your recourse as a defendant? You see, this is a person who has sued me. He has sued me. Okay? And you can even see, even in the first stage, I had deposited money in court. Okay? So having deposited money, it's upon him even to apply to court and have that money released to her. Okay? I cannot go and take a date and say, let me take a date so that this person... So that's why I'm saying we should have strict rules on how justice should be vindicated. I have no role to play in that case. I think I have no blame at all. I have not, I have not been in the court system. I don't take dates. I don't hear matters. I'm just a litigant like any other litigant. Okay. I had a lawyer a like any other lawyer. You are not a litigant like any other litigant. You are a litigant who also happens to be an officer of the court. Yes. And that's why the standard set upon you is slightly higher than a regular <laughs> litigant. You know, but that, anyway, yes. uh, you have appealed that decision. Yes. I just want to hear from you in what circumstances an appellate court would interfere with an award in the lower court. Now, I, that calls me to discuss the matter which is in court. You don't feel comfortable discussing that? Uh, I, I <laughs> the magistrate will hear it. It's okay. Maybe. It's okay if you don't feel comfortable. Yes, discussing. I don't feel comfortable. But okay. one thing is very clear. Uh, I, I think I, I would only summarize it in two ways. In that matter, in that matter, the only person who has sued me who had an accident was that lady. Usually in an accident, several there could be several people in a matatu who could, be, who could have been hurt. Okay? So when I looked at the file, I did not have a report. I did not know about the accident. Maybe, maybe because uh, Lake Star died, we could not be able to trace the documents. Now look at the contradictory nature of the evidence. I said I must defend myself. I don't mind if the lady is paid, let her be paid. I don't mind. I've already deposited 600,000 in court for me to do to pursue the appeal. So if the court makes a decision that, Messenger Berry, this lady has to be paid, so be it. I'm there for justice. Okay, thank you. Now, in your document, the other documents, uh, your, the vetting documents, uh, I noticed, uh, I did not see communication from the Ethics and Anti-Corruption. Did you apply for clear? Oh, yes, we have it. I have you, the document. Yeah, I even mean, was called. They wanted uh, some explanation, which I gave them, and they have no problem with me. Okay. And then I looked at your wealth declaration. You filed one initially. Yes. Which was not attested by a witness. Why is that? I thought it was. It wasn't. Maybe that's a mistake, I'm sorry. And I also noticed you did not indicate in the initial one. It was an uh, oversight. You are, I'm not done. You mm. did not indicate your bank account balance. You still haven't? I have. You can check. Uh, I have received one which belongs, is a financial statement for Nyaberi and Company Advocates. Yes. I'm talking about you as your bank balance. It even is indicated in the document itself. The same one for yes. the Nigerian company, yes. the one and the same. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Uh, for your spouse? Indicated. You have since filed. Okay, I think that's uh, basically it. Thank you very much, and I wish you well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, uh, Council, there's something I needed to ask you because of the requirement of uh, diversity, So, which is your county. Your county council. My county is Kisi County. And ethnicity? Yeah. Ethnicity? Um, Omogusi. Okay. Yes. I'm sure you know why you're asking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is this brings us to the end of the interview. Thank uh, you. Council, we have to thank you for coming. 
and also mention that as a commission we, we would want to have that paper that you talked about, the one that has strategies. I think anything that adds value to the judiciary we, uh, is welcome, Council, and we want to thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to add? No, I don't want to add anything. I want to thank you most sincerely for giving me this opportunity uh, to come and uh, appear before you. Uh, I'm very grateful. Uh, at least I've been able to communicate my needs, my position in respect of this position of judge of the Supreme Court. And I will only and I will humbly request that uh, uh, if I am given this job, I will take it as if I'm working for my God. I'll do it diligently, I'll do it in the best way, and I'll add value and a lot of value to the judiciary for posterity. Thank you, Council. Uh, the Commission has